Okay, we're into stage two now of the rehab program for my shoulder. So that's weeks four, five, and six. Now each week there'll be new exercises coming in. So for this week, which is week four, we're adding in a passive assisted range of movement exercise. Now you can use pulleys or you can rig it up yourself. So if you don't have a pulley system from your local physio and you're at home or you don't have access to that, but you're a little bit handy and you've got some things in the garage, you can rig it up like this. So I've got hooks in my ceiling already and what I've put is a bar through there which gives me something to swivel on like a pulley. Now this is just a normal rope like you tie down with a trailer and what it gives you is a nice smooth movement up the top there over the bar. So you can use a piece of wood, you can use a, this is just an old um, brew handle and I just put it up between those two hooks. Do whatever you like or you use a pulley system over the door. The reason for this is we want to get as much range of movement as we can with our limits using the other hand. So what you do is you put this one around my injured hand. So this is locked in. Now this is going to be passive. This one is the act of my right hand. So again, I roll that one up. And what I do is I start down low with my sore hand or injured hand. And my active good one pulls that up into flexion like that. With this one, what you're trying to do is keep your injured or surgical arm completely passive. So the pulling is from the injured up, and then you let gravity, a bit of weight, let it go down. So when you pull, use your right arm or your non-injured arm only, so this is purely passive. Now you notice, I can sort of get up above 90 degrees, but I am elevating a little bit here. And the other thing about when I do that, is when I come up, I'm actually internally rotated. Can you see that? I'm not actually at zero degrees because I've got zero degrees down here and that's where you've been doing your warm stuff. But I don't have zero degrees up here and I can't actively get up there and get that zero degrees. So what you've got to try and do is think, I've got to get 90 degrees within the next week, but I want it in external rotation zero degrees. So what I mean is, if I can show you side on, when I come out, I want to sort of actually use my wrist to keep my hand outwards. Try not to actively externally rotate because we're not into active movement yet. But keep the wrist so you're trying to keep an external rotation. And that's as far as I can get. Can you see that? So that's sitting about 60 degrees. So I'm back to 60 degrees. I can do 90 degrees in without external rotation. But I'm only really getting 60 there. So I've got a week to try and get pure flexion, meaning through zero degrees external rotation and that will give me much better results down the track when I need to go higher into flexion. So before we get into the other exercise, a few little tips for this week. Don't forget to keep using your ball, okay? Remember you're not using your surgery arm as much as your other arm. So you, you lose strength in this arm. You've got to keep up squeezing that ball. Every time you do your set of exercises, do as many squeezes as you can. Remember, don't squeeze too hard and activate too much here, but you've got to keep that grip strength up because you're not using your arm as much. Um, the other thing that it does is it stimulates your lymphatic drainage. Now, in my arm, there was a bit of lymph um, fluid in here, especially around the back and in the front, under the armpit. Squeezing that ball will help pump that away because I'm not moving my arm like this, which usually gets rid of that lymph stuff. So squeezing that ball is really important. So start working on that and start really getting into it. Um, the other thing I want you to focus on is making sure that you know you are doing what we call pure movement. So when you're raising your arm and doing this one, don't let your shoulder do that. Okay, try and keep your shoulders what we call scapular set. So keep your shoulder blades down when you're doing your movement out into abduction. And your goal this week is to try and get up to 90 degrees. Okay, the second exercise starting in week four is resisted scapular movement. Now, the trick is to make sure you're not doing any arm or shoulder movement, only scapular movement, but you can do it resisted. So what I suggest you do is hook up your theraband to something high to start with. I've just got a carabiner around a loop. Now, you've got to make this part nice and big because it's going to go around your entire shoulder. So what I suggest you do is put that through your surgical shoulder and go right up into here, right around the back of the shoulder. Now to stop it falling off, what I would do is make sure you just angled a little bit, rotated that way. If you angle this way, it's going to fall off your shoulder. So when you're standing there, just angle it that way. Now what you can do is forward and back is how much resistance you want. 
So from here, what I can do is just go from protraction and retract both shoulders. So this is going to start working on all your retractors, some lower trap, some rhomboids, and starting to work on pulling those shoulder blades back. Now at this sort of stage through week four, you should have enough sort of release and loosening around here that it doesn't feel too tight when you pull backwards. But don't go too far and stretch too much through here. If it hurts, don't go into it. So from protraction, full retraction. Now this is going to really going to help your strength and stability around the back here. Also just help your posture and relieve some of that roundness that you've been doing having your arm in the sling. So this is a really nice one to do. Again, try and keep about three sets of 10. You can do one shoulder at a time if you want to. So you can either do one shoulder or you can do two shoulders. Now you notice I'm not doing any real shoulder movement. It doesn't hurt at all. I'm not putting any stress on that rotator cuff. But I'm doing some great things for the back end. Now that's retraction. Now protraction, just turn around. So from there, all I'm trying to do, now this way, I'll just face the other way because otherwise it's going to fall off my shoulder. So it's from behind me. Again, I can step forward, let it retract, and just protract it forward. Okay, now because... The protraction is important, it gets your serratus going. We don't really want too much pec movement, it's just the shoulder blade. So you don't want you pushing your arm forward. But the reason why we have to do it like this is I can't push on a wall. I can't, I can't weigh, bear, weigh bear down through the floor. I can't push on a wall. I can't even get my arm up that high. So the classic scapular protraction against the wall, I can't do. So the only way I can do it is do it with just my shoulder blade, trying to use my serratus underneath. And if I've got a bit of resistance, that'll help some muscle activation. And then the last one is depression. So I'm actually just gonna keep it up there. Because it's high, I can step forward, get the right angle, and just pull down. All right, so this is activating my depressors. So let it rise up and pull down. All right, so if I show you here, let it rise up and pull down. So you can see the resistance there is giving me that muscle activation, which is gonna help with my lower trap. It's going to help with a bit of lat. Remember, I'm not doing any pulling work, so this is really going to help all my scapular stabilis start kicking into gear and relieve some of that postural load that I've got going on. The only other one is trying to do elevation. Now, this one's a little bit tricky to get it going, but you've got to get it around your shoulder again, and then you can use this as a resistance. So I would pull across your body, otherwise it's going to fall off your shoulder. So you just elevate and slow it down. Make sure... You're actually in neutral, not sort of forward. So make sure you're in neutral, good posture. Elevate the shoulder, use your upper trap, slow it down. Remember, no arm movement. So just scapular and down again. This is going to help you with all those knots up in that upper trap. It's going to help you with some strength. It's going to release some of that postural problem and that tension that's going on. So the last one is just a modification of the retraction exercise, which is going to lead you into a skydive later on anyway. But we're not doing any active work of the arm or the shoulder so it has to be purely scapular so i'll show you how to do that so just be careful when you're getting down remember you don't want to put any weight through this arm you want to go slow down like this forward on your front and then resting in that position now traditionally a skydive you're going to raise your hand i don't want you raising your hand so for this point here i want you just working on shoulder blade okay so there's no load through the shoulder joint at that point so just reaching backwards with the shoulder blade. So you're aiming for the shoulder blade to go to the back corner pocket. And it's a nice variation to do, especially if you haven't got access to the band for the day. All right, but just don't try too hard. Again, nice and easy, three sets of 10. Don't overstrain or try and get as much maximal squeeze or anything like that. You're just aiming for some active movement of that shoulder blade. It's not really resisted, it's only gravity, but it is a nice alternative to the one with the band. See you next week.